So I just got word from Mr. Joshua Bader that there's a little Cars and Coffee this morning. And I never take out that car. So I know Bobby's got things to do today. She's gonna take her STI and I'm gonna drive separately in the Mark IV Supra. I haven't taken that car out in probably six to eight months. Well, we made it to the shop to park to partake in some Honda activities. As you can see, we already got the tools out today and we are going to town getting our frame reinforced. So I was initially gonna, hmm, let's backtrack. Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. If you guys haven't been following along, we are building a K24 all-wheel drive FK8. All right, cool. So we had to notch the frame for the tie rods. The frame usually would come like, bam, but our new tie rod has to go through there. So I got that all plated up. I was gonna build that all out of one piece, but with the limited tools that I have, those are about the extent of my fab tools we got in the shop, that is what we were able to come up with. Of course, that is all just tacked in for now. Later on, we'll go through and make it beefy and weld it all up. I was hoping I could just make duplicates of the passenger side for the driver's side frame rail, but unfortunately my cuts were not precise enough. I think some of these pieces are gonna fit, like I know this lower one, will work just fine but the rest of it we're gonna have to remake because the cuts are uh, a little bit different let's go to town you already know the drill if you've been following along build out a cardboard trace this on to i'm using some quarter inch steel trace it onto the steel cut it out with our sick harbor freight cutoff wheel go ahead tack it all up in there and then i'm gonna pull the motor and training out just to get it fully welded up and before i fully weld it up while it's tacked i'm just gonna put the subframe in rack back in just to make sure we have adequate clearance on the tie rods. So that one's good. Hopefully you guys aren't getting too sick of the fab stuff. I kind of am, that's for sure. All right, that'll work. All of our nice metal pieces are cut out. I say nice very, very loosely but they work. Now we need to go ahead and clean off the metal that we're gonna weld to. I haven't really been doing a good job of that on this project, which kind of makes your welds <clears throat> shitty. But with this product I purchased, this wire wheel right here, this thing just rips the paint right off. Makes it nice and clean and easy to weld to. Well, we just ran out of gas for the welder for the third time on this project so far. All the gas, all the welding. But we can still make sure everything fits and clears like it should. And it's, of course, too late to get gas for the day. So quick test fit. We can grab some gas tomorrow, get everything welded up, and move on to the next task. So much space. That's plenty. Oh yeah. We have like, I mean, of course it's not gonna be a front to back, but with the boot fully extended, we still have a fair amount up top. We should be good. Just to make sure though, I'm gonna go ahead and slap on one side and then I'm gonna use the trans jack to compress the suspension just to make sure we're not gonna have any problems before I go ahead and fully weld that in. They are coil over, so they're not probably gonna compress all that much, but let's see what happens. It's lifting the car off the lift and we have plenty of clearance.
everything is fully welded up on the frame. Not the most beautiful welds in the world, but I think I'm definitely getting better, which is obviously the goal. So today I drove the Duramax into work and that's because we had to pick up this giant sheet of aluminum. I think this is quarter inch thick. No, it's not, it's eighth inch thick. And what we are about to attempt is building two fuel cells for the car. I am a little bit nervous about this. Aluminum is a lot more expensive than steel. So that sheet was obviously pretty spendy. We can't be in the position to do it multiple times because that'd be a couple thousand dollars in material alone. So I need to go ahead and get the subframe and diff and some sort of drive line in the car so we can build around it. This is the factory tank and the drive line runs right where the tank sits currently. So the plan is, well, let me, uh, let me get some parts installed and I'll show you guys the plan. This project that we're about to undertake or overtake, undertake, overtake, is another one of those things where uh, I'm nervous because of course I've never done any aluminum work before, but we gotta learn one day. So we might as well learn today. What do you want, bitch? Goddamn, that's some oily fingers. Oh, that McDonald's? Probably. Do you like any of these? I did see some comments about apparently you have to mount a diff upside down. You do not. And I spoke to some other Honda boys about it because I've seen the comment a few times and I think you have to mount it upside down if you're doing an H series with like a K series um, T case or something weird like that. But that does not apply to this build. We got all the parts installed that we need to get installed to build the cells. Rough mock-up of a random drive shaft, rear diff, subframe. Nothing else needs to go in. So the tank is gonna sit from right here and it can come all the way up here. So that alone is pretty dang big. And if you look over here on the other side, we have the same exact amount of space. I'm gonna run through and build just one out of cardboard and then we can duplicate it build two exact fuel cells, and that'll be a massive, massive step forward in the right direction for the build. I know FCS makes fuel cells for like older all-wheel drive Hondas. They're really, really nice looking, but I don't think they would fit this build all that well. So there's our 23 inches long by 10, pretty much 11 inches wide. I'm gonna see what we could build. We could do I said 23 by what, 11? We could do quite a bit bigger. I'm probably gonna go like, say like 13. I don't want it like completely butted up against here in the drive shaft. Let's do 12. 12 by, 12 by 23 is gonna be the base. And then height wise, we can go like six inches there. Let's just get the bottom, the base of it built and go from there. Perfect. Meant to be. It's already 23 long. I'm sure there's gonna be questions or comments regarding why I didn't just grab a pre-built like a radium fuel cell and slap it in the trunk. And the reason for that is because I wanted my trunk space. I'm trying to have this thing dailyable if I want it to be. We can make these pretty big if we wanted. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, I wanted the cells underneath the car, like a factory car. Mm -mm -mm. Hmm. There's a lot of space to play with. I might go bigger. So the final spec I decided on is 23 by 15. Add four inches is gonna add. It's gonna increase our fuel capacity by quite a bit, which I'm excited for. It's gonna be very interesting at the end of this, filling up the fuel cells and seeing how much fuel they hold. Hopefully it's around stock, if, even if it's like, if each of these hold four gallons, that'd be sick. If they both hold six, that'd be insane. Okay, plenty of space for the drive line. Plenty of space to go straight up. That side works. <laughs> Oof. Now, let's figure out how tall we can go, height-wise. I was initially, so I know the FCS ones on top, they kind of go like, they go brr, brr, brr. To make it easy on my life, I'm just gonna do, this is gonna be the bottom, this is gonna be the top. Easy enough. Do your tanks hang lower than your floorboard? Uh, 
the tank? No, so it's just above the lowest frame rail where the viscous mounts. Damn. All right, so I'm kind of rethinking my plans with this thing. We need eight inches of depth total to fit. Of course, we have a fuel level sender and then we have some other radium stuff I'll show you guys later on. We need eight inches of depth. If we went eight inches from this right here, the tank is gonna hang down like two inches below this guy here, which of course I don't want. So what we might have to do is come even further back and being, being that this curves up like that, of course, if we had our radium products back here, wouldn't be a big deal. We'd have all the space in the world. So I'm gonna have to make this longer. Oh yeah, we have like 11 inches back there. Of course, I'd have to pop that mount off. That thing's kind of in the way, but easy enough. They're gonna be four and a half inches deep all the way from up here to right here. And then it's gonna have to step up to make the space for our fuel hanger and our fuel level sender. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm just gonna start fabbing some stuff up out of cardboard and then we can kind of trace it onto aluminum, get it cut out, make some bends. So here's the bottom, the base. Here are the sides. So these are four and a half inches gonna come up. And then of course in the back half, we're gonna have to raise it to minimum, minimum of eight inches. Let's come back 19 inches before we curve up. All right, here's our beautiful fuel tank that we have so far. Of course, we need to cap the front off, but the back half, it's gonna go from this four and a half inch depth up to an eight inch depth. So that's gonna be a little bit tricky for my brain to comprehend how to build all that, because of course I want as least welds as possible. More bends, the better for me, because TIG welding aluminum is hard if you've never done it. So let's go ahead and build this eight inch depth back piece and go from there. So I'm running into a pretty big problem. This back plate right here, it needs to be this big. It actually has to be a little bit bigger. And the reason for it is because we have this very, very, very beautiful radium in cell surge tank. So this is their FCST, which stands for fuel cell surge tank. So it's a surge, an internal surge tank with an external pump mounted. So how this works is this is the, you'd consider, I guess, the lift pump. This guy right here is gonna feed the two Walbro 450s that are inside. So this is a single Walbro 450, and then it goes to the two internal Walbro 450s. Now, the footprint on this guy is massive. So we need to, we actually need to widen this up to a foot. We're about 11 and a half, so we're gonna have to go a half inch wider than what we currently have, which is not a big deal, there's plenty of space. But the problem is the width of this guy. So let's just uh, set it up in there. So that's how it's gonna sit. The problem with it is we may have to cut some material out from underneath the seat because this is as small as we can make this thing. And if we had it to where it butts up right against the current floorboard, maybe you'd call it underneath the seat right here, it would hang down from the car about an inch is what it's looking like. Unless we butt it up right against the subframe. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. If we went right against the subframe, we may not have to trim underneath the seat at all, which of course I definitely do not want to do. That would uh, not be fun. Let me do some thinking and see what we figure out. So what I figured out, if we want to run this, which of course I do, we already have it. We already spent the money on it. The tank is going to have to be set up pretty much how it is set up right now. So with that being said, we are gonna have to have the understanding that we may have to do a little bit of trimming. Now, it's not gonna come into the seat at all. It'll mainly be in the trunk. So this is that curvature up. So we may have to do a little bit of trimming on there, but we could always build a plate like that to cover it. So I think that's the best option. Not too stoked on it, but it could be worse. If we had to start lopping out foam out of the seat, that'd be not very fun. So let's move forward with the current tank setup, finish building that out, and then we can start doing it out of aluminum. So I'm ready to start tracing everything or marking everything on our aluminum sheet. Kind of nice, it has this little protective film on it, so it should stay nice and shiny, and we can mark or make our markings on there. But I am gonna build two different size tanks. One is gonna be 11 and three quarter inches wide. That is the minimum width for this tank setup. And the other tank for the passenger side is gonna be 10 and a half inches wide. And the reason for that is being that we have 
the offset pinion. There's less space on this side. This side is gonna have the fuel level sender. That side is gonna have the surge tank and we're gonna have about the same amount of fuel as a factory car. I'm ready to start marking everything up on our aluminum. The best way I think that I have to cut this, I'm gonna do a little test first before I waste the whole sheet, but I think a good old skill saw is gonna be our best bet. So this piece right here is the bottom and the side. So 11.5 or 11.75 wide, four and a half tall. This is only gonna be seven inches tall on the tall part, which is plenty for the hanger. Bottom and sides are done. And part of the top, we need to go ahead and build the back and the rest of the top. So other than the very front, that should be everything to build the entire fuel tank. So two, it's gonna be three pieces total, which is much less welds versus it'd be one, versus nine if we didn't have any of these bends. Now I need to find a shop that can properly make all those bends. We have no way of doing that here, which is okay. I don't mind uh, finding someone else to do that. It would be cool if we could do it here, but we don't have the tools. So you may be wondering why I only built one for now. And the reason for it is because I don't wanna cut the second one if this place that I found cannot make all those 90 degree bends in the one sheet. So build in one for now and then if they can make all those bends that we need to get bent then I'll go back and build the second. Apparently this place right here is the place that can do it. So the bend that I was worried they couldn't make they were not able to make so we got two of the bends done so this piece right here that was supposed to be folded over to be the lid they could not bend that down so i'm gonna go ahead and cut that off and then we need to figure out a good way to mount the hanger on this piece right here all righty so there we have it there's the majority of the of the of the cell now that i'm thinking about it i think i'm going to redo this piece and on this piece right here it's also going to include the front and then there'll be a 90 right here that steps up to the seven inch depth. Much less welding. We are gonna build two more pieces. The one is gonna come up the backside and up top, and then the other one is gonna come up the front, go there, and then pop up right here. bends on that guy there and then just one bend on this piece but this piece is the part that is going to require the mounting or the hole for this guy and what i'm going to do is just grab the gasket for it and put the gasket on there and then figure out how the hell we're going to cut this thing i have a skill saw i have a cutoff wheel and that's about it For really only having tools to cut straight lines, I am hyped with how not shitty this looks. Cleaned it up a little bit with a file. Now, of course, we just need to make sure that's actually gonna fit with the setup. This is so sick. So that is where it's gonna sit. We do need to move the lift pump up just a tiny bit, which we can do. It is adjustable according to the instructions, but that is the setup. Of course, this top plate is gonna be flipped around because this bend is gonna be the back panel but damn that is so sick well boys i'm gonna go ahead and clean up the shop and call that a wrap let this be a prime example of me literally not even knowing where to start to almost having one completed cell of course we still got to weld it which is the hard part i'll go ahead and tackle the welding tomorrow as my tig has not arrived yet otherwise i would be messing around with some welding right now practicing on random scraps and whatnot but yeah, like I said, when I started the day out, I had no idea what I was even getting myself into. And now we have a half completed cell with somehow a not completely 
messed up hole for the surge tank. Very, very excited. If I can do this, literally not knowing what, where to even start, I promise you guys can do it too. So if you have any wild, crazy dreams with your car build like I do with the Type R, tear it all apart, one project at a time, one step at a time, it all makes sense. And at the end of the day, it's gonna be a pretty insane car. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Peace out my good friends and I'll see ya tomorrow.